en question. Président, veuillez vous asseoir. Reprise de l'audience. The court is in session. La parole est donnée And au the international co-prosecutor is given the floor to resume the presentation. You may not proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. When we left Merci off, I had discussed the pause, uh, speech by Pol Pot about Paul Pot about killing Pot 50 million Vietnamese, the population of Vietnam, le, le and how that was broadcast de, de on the radio. One of the ways that that manifested itself, the consequences of this policy and this incitement Parmi les can be seen in actions by DK troops when they cross the border and attack into Vietnam. Ont Now these attacks and crimes outside of the territory of Cambodia are not part of the charges in this case within the scope of this trial. What they're relevant for though is this critical issue of intent that we've talked about and how this policy and incitement against the Vietnamese manifested itself. So while, if I understand the defense position, the position is that these attacks did not occur, this has been shown in the trial, including through the testimony of an uh, expert requested by the defense, Mr. Stephen Morris. And Professor Morris testified um, that on the 30th of April, excuse me, this is in his book, page 98 of his book, on the 30th of April 1977, Khmer Rouge units attacked several villages and towns in Anyang and Chao Toc provinces of southern Vietnam, burning houses and killing hundreds of civilians. Expert witness Nayan Chanda testified in an earlier trial. Uh, his transcripts are part of the evidence in this case and also his book. And in his book, Brother Enemy, pages 99 to 100, he talks about a Hungarian journalist, Kandor Dura, who was taken to the border region inside Vietnam in Tai Ninh. And Chanda indicates that Dura witnessed ruined buildings and many dead and burned people, mainly women and children. He reported on the destruction of several villages and civilian casualties running into the hundreds. When Nayan Chanda testified in 2009, he talked about his own visits uh, to areas that had been attacked by DK troops near the border. And he said on the 25th of May, the village that I visited looked like it had been hit by a storm. Houses were destroyed and a lot of debris still lying around. I met some survivors who had told me about what happened. And I must say, I was shaken by the accounts of the atrocities that were committed during this attack. I have never heard of such brutalities perpetrated by man on women, children, innocent people. He went on to say, that is a visit which is absolutely engraved in my memory. And I even have a personal nightmare about those visits. I have never seen in my reporting career as many bodies of civilians killed most brutally and left there. And the mindlessness of this attack was most astonishing that I wondered what these people had done to merit that kind of death. And the evidence of this has even been commented on by Q. Sampan in his own book about Cambodia's recent history, E318. He wrote, the events recounted by people like Chanda are irrefutable. There is no doubt that the Khmer Rouge made forays into the Vietnamese villages along the border, committing appalling crimes against Vietnamese civilians.
commettant des crimes atroces contre des civils vietnamiens. And of course, Your Honours, Thieu Sampan and Nun Chia would know about this because they were the center center of the DK regime. Ils au cœur même and there are even are surviving reports Il y a aussi from these battlefields uh, by DK units to the center. Par les One of those is E3 slash T43. It's a telegram dated 19 January uh, 1978. It's actually from South Pim using his alias Chun to Brother Paul with copies to Uncle Nun, Nun Chia, Brother Van, Brother Vaughan, and Office, and Office undoubtedly being Office 870, where Q Sampan at that time would have been the only member. In paragraph one of that report, Sao Pim reports we launched. Sao Pim écrit ceci. Please hold on. There is uh, an issue with interpretation. Il y a des problèmes d'interprétation. President, uh, please resume your presentation and repeat the last few sentences you said. Thank you, Mr. President. So in this telegram E3-243 from Sao Pim, that's to Pol Pot and Nun Chia and Office 870, he reports we launched guerrilla attack in their territory, two kilometers from our border. Result, we smashed 30 military houses and burned down several civilian houses. We smashed two enemy motorboats. Their people in the motorboats were all destroyed. He also reports that at 3 a.m. we continued firing rocket 107 into Hokungai market. We could not grasp the result, however we saw it was on fire. Je cite, nous pas pu voir Another la telegram de is E3 slash 1076. Ensuite, autre it's dated 8th of 1, April 1978, avril 78. and it's sent by Sun Sen, telegram de Sun Sen. with his alias 47. <coughs> Signé de son alias, 47. And in that telegram, he reports, Dans ce telegram, we attacked and entered ceci. the Dong Tap population Nous center avons in the market south of Trepang Piam and Tan Cha. We killed dans le marché and wounded de many hundreds of them de Chau, and burned nous avons hundreds of houses. Et des we continue de to fire 107 millimeters and DK-75 into Tan Chao. The late King Father Notre Dame Sihanouk recalled Paul Pot telling him that the DK army were sent to, quote, the Kampuchea Krom with the mission to kill as many men, women, and children as possible of the evil race. So what we see is that around 1977, Vers 77. There seems to have been a decision made une décision semble that no longer would there be an attempt to deport the few Vietnamese that remained in the country, but rather to kill them. Le pays, mais de les tuer. Prum Sorun, Prum Sorun, in Banan district in the northwest zone, testified de, here on 8th of district December de Banan, 2015 a à la barre that his battalion chief told him il a dit que son to chef report de any Vietnamese in the units de signaler la présence the dans les unités and de tous Vietnamiens, lesquels seraient Heng ensuite Heng envoyés au district pour être tués. Hieng Leng Heng du secteur 105 
on the 19th Trachet, of September 2016, à la barre, le 19 septembre 2016 that his uncle was a il a dit Khmer que son oncle person, était un Khmer whose wife dont l'épouse était Vietnamese. une Vietnamienne de souche the children did not dont speak les enfants Vietnamese, they ne only spoke Khmer. parlaient pas le Vietnamien mais seulement le Khmer cependant tous ont été said, quote, raflés et emmenés et il cite c'est parce que leur politique c'était que les gens reliés aux Vietnamiens n'étaient pas épargnés And, Your Honors, I have a, we prepared a very short video compilation pour of bits of testimonies ce that we've heard in this court from witnesses and civil parties. De de parties that is Prak Doon on the 2nd of Prak December 2015, Chong Yang Chat, 7th of December 2015, Uch Sun Lei, the 2nd of March 2016, 2016, and also on the 1st of March. And Heng Le Heng, 19 September 2015. Sin Chiem, 14 December 2015. And finally, Pak Sok, on 16 December 2015. So if that could just be played to remind us of some of the testimony we've had about how the Vietnamese were treated. Comrade Hum, the unit chief of mine, told me about that. He tried to console me the next morning that my wife and child had been killed. And that comrade blamed me why I married the Vietnamese wife. They took him to the to close, close to the pit where they would execute him. It was about 100 meters away near the foothill. However, however, I did not see them kill my, fa my parents when I arrived at the pit. I saw their dead bodies in the, in the pit, dead bodies of my father, my mother, and my siblings. My wife was half-blooded Vietnamese, and my children were considered Vietnamese uh, grandchildren. It was known by the Khmer Rouge, and the saying and policy of Khmer Rouge was fully known by the grassroots that to dig up grass, one must dig up the roots. It means when the Vietnamese mother and children were taken, their grandchildren and great-grandchildren were considered Vietnamese KGB agents, and they would be taken as well. I knew this clearly because I witnessed it and I observed it myself. I had Children and small children were killed, and Des among them, three children tués, were mine, two sons, enfants, one daughter. My first child was Mon Sotira, who was born Sotira, in 1970. En so he was eight years old when he was killed. Tué. My second child Mon was Sotiria. And this child was born in 1975, and the youngest child, Sotida, who was about one year old. And what even was worse was that the Khmer Rouge distributed the clothes from those people they killed to people in the cooperatives. And I saw the clothes of my children and wives and people in the cooperative could identify through the clothes that my wives and my children were really killed. Les habits de ma femme et de mes enfants, c'est ainsi que nous avons su qu'ils avaient été tués. So J'ai énormément souffert, je n'arrivais plus à manger, à boire, ni à dormir. And sleep. I tried to avoid myself to meet with any people because the party instructed us that we had to keep high morality, party, high sacrifice for the purpose of the great du grand party. party. Et faire preuve the de Communist moralité. Party. It was a strong party. C'était un parti puissant. And it was said that uh, this party had uh, obtained a victory. Et l'on disait que le parti avait gagné. When Vietnam invaded, they set up the envahi, mechanism to encounter the Vietnamese. The major that were meant to educate people at the rear was that for those pour who les gens, were half-blooded. Vietnamese had to be smashed. Que ceux qui à être, euh, 
Otherwise, Donc, uh, when Vietnamese made an entry, à l'arrivée des Vietnamiens, they would ces gens-là the s'en seraient fait les complices. That was the voilà set le principle. principe qui avait été fixé. Those who had Vietnamese wives and children, their wives, uh, together with the children, were taken away and killed. Eh bien, la femme et les enfants étaient emmenés pour I être felt tués. A pity on them. J'ai ressenti pity la pitié. At least eux, they should have kept ils auraient their au moins eu épargné les enfants. Let me, let me go back to something. When, if a, if a mixed couple uh, with a Vietnamese wife, um, if the wife was Vietnamese and she was taken away, what happened to the children? The children Les were also taken away and killed. It was so brutal. How many of the Vietnamese people in your commune were taken away and killed, Madam Witness? Madame le témoin. They were taken away. Four families were taken away. Quatre familles. Regarding the question, Posed to ethnic Vietnamese people on the boat, Concernant the amputated, souche, the man with the amputated arm uh, was bateau, a soldier. L'homme au bras Besides, amputé uh, était un soldat. The, there were ordinary en outre, people. Il y avait when des gens we asked uh, them Nous where demandé, you were heading to, they answered they were heading to Thailand and they were arrested between the island of Tang and Bulawai, and they were brought to, into the port. Arms or attempt to resist arrest. Avait-il des armes? Ont-ils tenté de résister? No. No. There were no guns and weapons. Do you remember any a baby being among that group? Do you remember if there was a, an infant? Oui, je m'en souviens. I can't recall that. Quand ils ont été amenés au port de Ochitil, le bébé port, pleurait the baby fort cried parce que loudly sa mère était the ligotée. Was tied up. And then the baby was le bébé allait être encore. Les soldats ont jeté son corps dans la mer. Your Honor, it's Mias Voon, who was the Deputy West Zone Division Mias Commander, Division 1, Commander testified that he turned over Vietnamese uh, refugees that were captured at sea to the Navy Division 164. À la division 164 de la Marine, Pak Sok, des Vietnamiens Pak Sok, was a Sok, cadre, a low-level cadre in soldier in Division 164. De la division 164. He talked about the killing of that baby and the 11 other people who were with the baby. And he also talked about the killing of another family that was captured at sea. Father, mother, and a small child, all executed and thrown into a pit. Again, we have additional documents. You can see slide number three, showing that um, these crimes, these killings, were reported to the center. We actually saw part of this telegram earlier today. But in the early part, this is a telegram from the 4th of August, 1978, E3-1094, from the West Zone. And it indicated that it had applied the party's line que la ligne du parti to routinely remove, screen, and sweep clean enemies by screening for, among others, human uh, aliens. And then it reported the result of this screen, ensuite, screening, which you see on the screen, smashed 100 ethnic humans, including small and big, et grand, adults and children. 
Finally, Your Honors, um, the treatment of this small Vietnamese community that remained le at the end of the regime, 1977-78, is also shown through the records of the center's own security center, S21, S21 operating under the um, command of Nguyen Che. We can have slide number four. This is taken from our, free uh, our final trial brief, Annex F2. Annex F2. It indicates Vietnamese arrested by month and sent to S21. And as you can see, there is a huge spike that begins in early 1978, Vietnamese brought in. And if we can see the next slide, please. This shows how in S21, the authorities there described the Vietnamese prisoners. There's a total records that we have uh, identified of 728 individuals identified as Vietnamese. Approximately 34.9% were classified as soldiers. Much bigger number, 49% as civilians. Ont été considérés comme des soldats parmi les 728 prisonniers vietnamiens et 49% comme des civils, selon les catégories établies par les autorités de S21. And he testified last year about one particular incident where a Vietnamese family was brought in. You can play the next video, please, number four. Une famille vietnamienne, extrait vidéo. There was a two-story house. Il y avait un bâtiment à deux étages. And it was used at an office Il était utilisé to receive pour réceptionner prisoners. les prisonniers. Upon my arrival, I was standing guard on the Je ground floor. La garde au -de and then there was a family, Vietnamese family, who arrived. Une famille Husband, de Vietnamiens wife, and est arrivée. Le mari, la femme et leur that, jeune fille, uh, who was about, uh, oh, one leur petite year old, fille who qui avait environ un an. The child followed, uh, the parents, and, like, boo, Le bébé suivait ses parents. And, uh, toi, Dès que Bou et Toi ont arraché l'enfant à ses parents, into the office. The doors uh, were closed at the time. Les parents ont été amenés au bureau. Les portes étaient fermées. And afterwards, the child Ensuite, uh, was uh, dropped onto the ground. Ils ont laissé tomber. Was dropped off uh, from the, the uh, high Le floor and died. And th then the child was uh, buried to the southern area of uh, that office. Envoyé au sud du bureau. Now, as one of the things we learned from the testimony of the cadre from S21 is that children were not normally registered. General, their photos weren't taken, their names weren't written down. They were brought into S21. So the surviving records that we have, we submit, do not reflect the accurately the number of children that were taken to S21 and executed around, in and around S21. But there are some surviving records of children of Vietnamese ethnicity. If we can show the next slide, uh, we showed this, uh, my colleague showed this this morning, talking about S21. Again, there are not many pictures that survive. But this is a 13-year-old Vietnamese girl from Spain who entered S21 in May 1978, along with her brother, who was five years younger than her. He was only eight years old. And her father, who was listed on the records of S21 as doing rice field in Sveirang. This young girl, Vinh Thi Nhok, is one of uh, 16 Vietnamese children between the ages of 13 and 15 who appear in the records of S21 that survive, the records that survive. We can go to the next slide. Image suivante. In the, oh, the records, excuse me, it should be slide seven, yes. La sept. In the records of S21, there are seven children between the ages of sept 10 and 11 years old, seven Vietnamese children. 
sont mentionnés dans les documents de Here is one of these Vietnamese children, Li Yang Vei. Li Yang Vei. He's number 610. Uh, excuse me, he's number 12590 on the OCIJ list. This photo is number 610 from the more recent collection that DC Cam brought, uh, shared with us. He was from the southwest zone and entered S21 on the 12th of October, 1978. The other young children are listed in a footnote in our brief, footnote number 2303 of our final brief. And Donc, among them is another eight-year-old girl, de conclusions finales, Lee fait mention Timmy notre Pong. Fiette, She's Lee number Timmy Pong. 12697 on the OCIJ list. Dans la liste du bureau des and there's also two seven-year-old boys who are listed. De 7 ans One of them, again, we don't have photographs Encore that survive fois, from these children. De photos One of them, de ces enfants. Um, Trong Yang Fak. He was entered S21 on the 30th of October, 1978, and the next day he was executed. He's described by S21, seven-year-old, as a Vietnamese spy, Comme un espion vietnamien. as Ce was another seven-year-old boy, même chose pour Trong, un autre Yang de même âge. Trong Yang Ngoc, he's number 12660 on the OCIJ list. Your Honors, if we can go back to the next slide, go to the next slide. It's E3-4604. It's a copy of the Revolutionary Flag magazine from April 1978. And this talks about the success of the policy of sweeping clean the Vietnamese. It indicates, and now, how about Yuen? There are no UN in Kampuchean territory. Formerly, there were nearly one million of them. Now, there is not one seed of them to be found. While most of the Vietnamese were transported out of Cambodia in the early years of the regime, the policy, as I said, evolved to killing the few that remained, many or perhaps most of them being simply people of mixed blood or married to my spouses. Those killings constitute genocide. It was an attempt to destroy the Vietnamese ethnic group in Cambodia as such. So I would now like to move on and talk about the Cham people. <coughs> In the Cham, the story of what happened to the Cham is a different history than what happened to the Vietnamese. It differs in several respects. If we can go back to the definition of genocide, if we can have that slide put up again, the first slide. We call that genocide is defined as certain acts such as killing members of the group with the intent to destroy in whole or in part a national, ethnical, racial, or religious group as such. One of the issues that is still developing in international law, and your judgment, I believe, will be critical in the further development of this international law of genocide. What do these words, as such, mean? It's a fundamental principle of statutory construction interpreting any law that all words in the statute are presumed to have a meaning. They're not put there for no purpose. So what does it mean, let's just take religious group, to destroy a religious group as such? Why did they add the words as such? Well, we submit that a religious group, for example, is a group of people that have in common a faith. They practice, they have certain beliefs that they share. They practice their religion together. If you stop these people from practicing their religion, the group does not no longer exist. The individuals may exist, but you have destroyed the religious group as such. And there are various ways you can do that. Some of them would amount to genocide and some would not. If you simply, for example, close schools down, that may be persecution, 
Là, on peut parler de persécution, mais pas de génocide. But if, as part of your policy, you kill members of the group, that's one of the five genocidal acts. That is genocide.